If you're watching this channel, then you've likely already heard of Jim Busher. If you don't recognize the name, he is the author of the massively popular Dresden Files series, which is an extraordinarily down-to-earth magic noir about a wizard detective who uses his meager magic skills in order to protect Chicago and the people he cares about. It's a very grounded and serious book, but you don't need me to review it. Instead, we're talking about his other series, which explores what would happen if the Roman Empire discovered Pokémon. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Book Café, where we review books, talk fantasy, and continually push back our author interviews. If you're new here, consider subscribing, and if you're a veteran, welcome back. Those of you who've been keeping up with the videos will know that we had an interview scheduled for this week with Peter V. Brett, author of The Warded Man. Unfortunately, it had to be pushed back again because Mr. Brett was sick this week. The new date hasn't been set yet, but in compensation for having to push the interview back so many times, Mr. Brett has volunteered to do a giveaway once the video actually goes up. The terms of the giveaway haven't been set yet, so we'll keep you updated as that happens. Now, thanks to the influence of C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien, most fantasy fiction is medieval. There's nothing in particular wrong with that, it's just the way the genre went. Over the last few decades, authors have begun exploring different time periods as well, primarily the modern day, the Renaissance, and the Victorian era. However, there is the rare fantasy series that goes backwards from the medieval period, and today we are reviewing one of those. Jim Butcher's Codex Alera, set in a world modeled on the Roman Empire, where every human has a connection to a subset of the six elements through a symbiotic relationship with creatures called Furies. Everyone has between one and four Furies. The aristocracy are those who have the more powerful or more numerous Furies, and the Furies provide a variety of superpowers depending on which element they correspond to. However, humanity was only able to eke out a living in the land of Valera through desperate conquest, and as a result is beset on all sides by three separate sentient species. Because of these conflicts, the current First Lord of Valera has no heirs, and is rapidly becoming too old to sire any, so a conspiracy has arisen in the Empire to replace him at any cost in order to preserve stability. As part of their plan, the conspirators invite the Marat, ancient enemies of the Alaran humans, to attack the Empire again, which can only be done in one place, a little-known province of the Empire called Calderon Valley. And into the middle of this walks the Monkey Wrench, our main character, Tavi of Calderon. He is the only human being in the entirety of Alera who does not have a fury. He has no powers whatsoever, and is caught between men who can fly, turn visible, and lift boulders, and a people who are capable of mentally interfacing with their animals. He discovers the impending Marat invasion by accident, and when he realizes that his warnings to the government are being cut off, he resolves to stop them himself which is where the villains begin to discover that just because Tavi has no powers doesn't mean he's not powerful. Tavi of Calderon is one of the most brilliant characters in fiction. Despite having no... he has no experience with politics or military matters, but since he doesn't have a fury to use as a crutch, he's been forced to expand his mind in ways that his countrymen don't. Over the course of the series, he pulls off some of the most brutally effective military victories I've seen outside of the works of Robert Jordan, successfully maneuvers four different conspiracies into offing each other, saves the entire empire so many times that you'd be forgiven for mistaking him for some kind of trickster god. Moreover, Busher's experience writing the Dresden Files has left him with a deep appreciation of David versus Goliath storytelling, and he pulls it off beautifully. Every time Tavi succeeds, you get the impression that he barely pulled it off by the skin of his teeth. There is real, actual tension in the storytelling, as well as a pervading sense of real politic, I think that's how that's pronounced, that grounds an otherwise really silly story concept, and makes it into something fairly genius. Moreover, the series emphasizes that as clever as he is, Tavi can't solve all these problems alone, and puts a great deal of stock in the amount of help he gets from his family, his fellow students, and from the men that trust him. Overall, where I'd say this series falls on the thermometer is it buy it new. I read the first four books, and each of them is definitely worth it. The only reason I haven't read more is because they're sometimes hard to find. But if you can get your hands on a copy, devour it. You won't regret it. Have you read the Codex Alera? What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments, or just tell me what you think I should review next. Now, a little bit of news. I have much less free time than I used to, so I'm going to be cutting these videos back. 
I'm only going to be doing one video a week for the next few weeks. If I get more free time, I might bump it back up to two, but that's a definite maybe. In the meantime, watch my Twitter for updates on the Brett interview. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and click on the dragon to subscribe, or just click here to watch more videos from the book cafe. I probably won't see you again until next Saturday, so in the meantime, have a lovely week and read good fantasy.